This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Corner. When Alexander Usyk won a 12-round split decision against Tyson Fury back in May, Usyk became the 45th heavyweight in history to be recognized as the lineal champion of boxing's marquee weight class under the Marquess of Queensberry rules. On December 21st, Fury will get the opportunity to regain that honored distinction. Of the 43 lineal world heavyweight champions who preceded Fury, only 12 had the opportunity to reclaim that distinction against the man who dethroned him. Fury will be the 13th to get that opportunity when he has his rematch with Usyk. Can Tyson Fury beat Alexander Usyk in the rematch? History is not on Fury's side here. Only 12 of 43 previously got the opportunity, and out of those 12 who did, only 4 men succeeded, just one third of those who tried. The first to succeed in doing so was Floyd Patterson. Patterson lost the World Heavyweight Championship in June 1959 when he was stopped by Ingemar Johansson. Ingo dropped Patterson time and time again in round 3, which was an absolute nightmare of a round for the champion. After the seventh knockdown in the round, the fight was mercifully stopped, and Ingemar became the new heavyweight champion. A year later in June 1960, Patterson and Ingo had a rematch. Patterson scored two knockdowns in round five, the last of which was a picture-perfect demolition job of a left hook that knocked Ingemar out cold. Patterson was the first boxer in history to regain the heavyweight crown, which is historically mighty significant, especially when you consider that in the 60 plus years before that, eight former heavyweight champions had tried and failed, going 0-11 for their efforts until Patterson finally did it. Next up was Muhammad Ali. Ali's second reign came to an unexpected end in February 1978 when he lost a 15-round split decision against Leon Spinks in what was just the eighth professional fight for Spinks. Later that year in September, Ali defeated Spinks by 15-round unanimous decision. That victory provided Ali with the unique distinction of becoming the only boxer in history to become a three-time lineal heavyweight champion, a record that stands to this day. Next up was Evander Real Deal Holyfield. In November 1992, Holyfield lost the undisputed crown in an action-packed instant classic against Riddick Big Daddy Bo. One year later, in November 1993, Holyfield defeated Bo by a razor-thin 12-round majority decision. Bo was no longer undisputed at the time of the rematch, but he did hold two of the big three of that time, and Holyfield had become just the third heavyweight in history to reclaim the lineal heavyweight crown. And finally, the great Lennox Lewis. Lewis lost his heavyweight championship in April 2001 when he was brutally stopped by Haseem Rockman in round 5. Later that year in November, Lennox returned the favor when he scored a highlight reel knockout of his own against Rockman in round 4 to regain the lineal crown. That victory marked Lennox as the fifth heavyweight to ever recapture the lineal championship. Side note, the fourth was Big George Foreman, but we are not counting him here because his reign was separated by more than 20 years and Foreman didn't regain the crown against the man he lost it against. So if history is any indication, the odds are against Fury avenging his loss against Usyk to reclaim the lineal crown. Bottom line, out of the 43 lineal champions who preceded Fury, only 4 of those 43 reclaimed the lineal crown against the man they lost it to. Granted, most never even got the opportunity, so if you're Fury looking at the glass half full, he at least is getting the opportunity, unlike Vladimir Klitschko, where the Fury vs. Vlad rematch never came together. Perhaps Anthony Joshua represents a better point of comparison here. AJ was never the lineal world heavyweight champion, but he is a former two-time unified heavyweight champion, holding three of the big four in each reign. AJ first lost his unified crown against Andy Ruiz Jr. back in June 2019, but when the two had an immediate rematch in December of that year, AJ thoroughly outclassed Ruiz without needing to take things out of first gear, en route to winning a lopsided 12-round unanimous decision. 
AJ would again lose his unified crown in September 2021, when he lost the 12-round unanimous decision against Usyk. Those two had a rematch in August 2022, and Usyk once again beat AJ. Although strangely enough, this time it was by 12-round split decision. In fairness to AJ, he did put forth a more spirited effort against Usyk this time around, but it didn't seem close enough to warrant a split. Before that rematch happened, I speculated whether or not AJ could win the rematch, and essentially concluded that while Usyk was reasonably the obvious favorite going in based on their first encounter, that AJ didn't necessarily need to reinvent the wheel especially since two of the three judges gave him four and five rounds respectively. That is my general feeling here too. Usyk is the clear favorite going into his rematch against Fury, but Fury doesn't exactly need to reinvent the wheel here, especially when you consider that Fury had more success against Usyk than anyone else has since Usyk moved up to heavyweight. Like the Usyk-Joshua rematch, the first fight between Usyk and Fury ended in a 12-round split decision, which feels like another bit of a head-scratcher, where I personally thought Usyk clearly won, despite the fight being fairly close. In my opinion, Usyk-Fury was a bit closer than either of the Usyk-AJ matches, but the fact that it ended in a split decision makes the idea even more pronounced. Fury doesn't exactly need to reinvent the wheel here to have a chance to win. In round three of their first encounter, Fury started jabbing better. He was doing some good work downstairs, and by making Usyk come to him, he was able to catch Usyk with some nice straight rights and some good uppercuts, while still unleashing a stellar body attack consistently. I thought Fury established some momentum here over the next few rounds, which is something that had not happened previously against Usyk since he made the jump to heavyweight. Fury was in control for much of the action these next few rounds, and it almost began to appear as if Fury had him figured out. Even by round 7, Fury was still boxing extremely well, although Usyk came on strong late in the 7th, and it turned out that Fury's momentum was beginning to fizzle out by then. By round 8, Usyk was the one building momentum, and he landed a couple of shots in that round that had Fury distressed, where he was touching his nose an awful lot, and he was also beginning to bleed. This caused Fury added difficulty as Usyk was coming on really strong in the early parts of the second half of the fight. Then round 9 was a total nightmare for Fury, where Usyk had him really shook up and was battering him all over the ring, with Fury stumbling around all over the place. To his credit, Fury exhibited the type of championship heart we've seen from him before, but he appeared badly hurt, he had no legs underneath him, and ultimately the devastating onslaught left Fury helplessly collapsed into the ropes. Fury's recuperative powers were famously on display again, and Fury began making a fight of it again, but Usyk was still doing the better work far more often than not down the final stretch of the fight. If you're Tyson Fury and you're looking for signs of encouragement, I think the fact that Usyk busted his face up in round 8 may have contributed to him being distressed to the point that it helped shape the opening for the round 9 beatdown. The fact that Fury survived such an atrocious round and made it to the final bell is also something that I suppose could be encouraging. And of course, the ample success that he had, which started gaining steam in round 3, peaked in rounds 4, 5, and 6, and ultimately started to fade a bit in round 7. There are things to build on here. Add in the fact that the fight was a taxing endeavor for Usyk, even in victory, and the fact that Usyk is 37 years old. There is reason to believe that the wear and tear is starting to catch up with Usyk, just enough that Fury might have an edge. Then again, Fury hasn't exactly been living the lifestyle of a world-class athlete, so perhaps it's hitting him harder. But considering his fluctuations in weight, and the fact he looked horrible in his previous fight against Nganu, perhaps there is hope that Fury can be better conditioned, because that is an area where Usyk's advantage is perhaps most pronounced. As a final thought, I'm still a bit surprised why Fury never did much of anything to try and make the fight more physical. 
I understood that when it came to AJ, because AJ was never much of a physical fighter. But Fury is a guy known for being extremely physical since pairing up with Sugar Hill. And strangely enough, Fury never did much to make things physical. Perhaps it simply boils down to the fact that it ain't easy making things physical against a smooth operator like Usyk. But I think trying to make things more physically taxing, where he at times makes better use of his massive size advantage, would serve Fury well. Can Tyson Fury win the rematch against Alexander Usyk? I have no idea whatsoever. I ain't exactly Quasimodo over here. All I can say is I think Usyk is the clear favorite going in. But at the same time, I think a lot of observers are completely writing off Fury's chances a bit prematurely. After all, Tyson Fury doesn't exactly need to reinvent the wheel over here. But he sure as hell is going to need to do something very special to fine tune his approach and execute better to have a chance to win. December 21st on the Zone Pay Per View, an early Christmas treat that I cannot wait to see. Do you think Tyson Fury has a chance in his rematch against Alexander Usyk? Please share your thoughts in the comments section. Thank you very much for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed and have a wonderful night. This is Rummy's Corner. You know, Quasimodo predicted all this.